This afternoon, we will be uh, mag-uumpisa po tayo ng new series and our new series is all about A Sure Hope, How Christmas Shines Through Darkness. So these are short series of messages about biblical characters before the birth of Jesus. And on December 24, it's Christmas Eve, so Pastor Peter will give us a powerful message about Jesus. And this is a perfect, no? a, a, a perfect time for us to celebrate Christmas. Dahil malapit na po ang Kapaskuhan, bibigyan ko kayo ng pagkakataon na manalo ng GC from Army Navy or Starbucks through our Bible Trivia Challenge. <laughs> Okay? Simple lang po ang, ang, ang rules natin. Ang unang magtaas ng kamay ay magkakaroon po ng prebeleyo na manalo po ng gift certificate. Okay? No, pag tinaas niyo po yung kamay niyo, dapat po with full conviction na naniniwala kayo buong puso ang paniniwala niyo na tama yung, yung sagot niyo. Okay? So we already deployed uh, a DTI representative and SGB representative para po... Uh, Tag dito sa Bible trivia natin. Okay? Are you ready? So, unahan lang po, no? As, okay? Nandiyan na po, no? Ayan na ho. Okay. Let's proceed. Our Bible trivia question. So, this Bible trivia, it, it pertains to events or characters bago po ipinanganak ang Panginoong Jesus. Okay? So, let's start. Okay. According to the Bible, which animals were mentioned as being present inside the manger when Jesus was born, A, donkey, B, sheep, C, goats, D, all of the above, and E, none of the above. Okay, like, oh, give the microphone. Sige, sino po yung nanalo? Oh, sorry, sino po yung magsasagot? Hindi pa na nanalo. Okay, yes, sir? Letter D, all of the above. The answer is, all, oh, mali. <laughs> mali <laughs> Wala na po, no? Kasi po, pagka sinasagot yun, Dahan-dahan na babawasan po yung, yung, yung sagot. So, tatat, nakukuha nyo na po yung tama. No? Ano po ang sagot? The answer is letter E. None of the above. Wala po sinasabi sa Bible na meron pong animals doon po sa manger. No? Wala pong ganon. So, siguro po na, na, na nakita nyo lang yun sa pictures. No? <laughs> no? Naalala nyo yan. Ah, ayun siya. Okay? So, okay. Oh, wag ko kayo mawawala ng pag-asa. Meron na po. Okay? Ito po. Ang ganda po nito, no? Of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, only one does not say about the birth of Jesus or beginning which Gospel is, which gospel is that? A. Matthew. B. Mark. C. Luke. B. John. Like, oh, who's the... Ito po yata. Ayan, si sir. Okay. Okay. Y- yan po ang gusto, ang mabibilis. John. Okay. Uh, ano pong name nyo? Edgar Barty po. Edgar. Edgar, uh, nagbabasa po kayo ng Bible? Opo. Okay. Praise God po. Palagi po kayo nagbabasa? Opo. Praise God po. Ano? Patuloy lang po kayo magbasa? Uh, wag po kayong panginaan ng, 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 ano, ng loob? Ang sagot po ay B. Mark. Yan po ang book ng, ng, ng Bible na hindi po binanggit ang birth ni Jesus Christ or about His beginnings. And you will know that. Okay lang po, no? Tuloy-tuloy lang po tayo. Ito po. Sabi dito, How many magi does the Bible say worship the baby Jesus? A1, B2, C3, B, none of the above. Like, oh, are from SGB. Now, binibigay na po. Yan, sige po. Letter With position. C po. Letter C. Letter C. Ah, uh, okay. Letter C. And the answer is? Mali po yung sagot nyo. <laughs> the answer is? None of the above. Wala pong sinasabi sa Bible na ta- tatlo po yung magi or, or kings, no? Although, ang sinasabi po sa Bible, tatlo yung gift. But hindi nangangahulugan, tatlo po ang nagbigay niyan. Okay? Pwede pong dalawa, pwedeng tatlo, pwedeng apat. So, the Bible is silent on this. Okay lang po yan, ano? Ang pinakamaganda, natututunan natin ito. Okay? 
How many days after the birth of Jesus did Joseph and Mary officially give him the name of Jesus? A1, B3, C5, and D8. Ayan, ayaw na ho. Wala na nagtataas. <laughs> ayan, ayan po. Sa taas. Wow. Ito malakas yung loob nito. Sige. So, ano po? Ayan. No? Galing pa ho sa fifth floor. And of course, yan po. No? Buong, buong lakas at buong puso nyo pong sagot, sabihin nyo sagot nyo. Okay? Ano po? Nagkakagulo po sila. Ako, 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 ako. Huwag, huwag po kayo magkagulo. Alam ko ay tama yung sagot nyo. At sino po? Hindi ko makita. Sabi po dito, ano po yung sagot nyo? Wala pong ganun. Ha? Three. Si, ano pong sagot nyo? B3. Okay. B3. Okay. Nice. So, anyway, wag po kayong <laughs> panghinaan ng loob. Magpursigay mag mag po pa kayo lagi kayo sa Bible. Ang tamang sagot po ay letter sabi po, letter D. Luke chapter 2 verse 21. In the Jewish practice, bago po officially ibigay ang pangalan ng bata, kailangan na circumcise siya. And if you will note in that, Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. So that was the day was where Mary and Joseph officially gave the name Jesus. Okay? Okay, last na po ito, no? Uh, mukhang wala pa... <laughs> Mukhang mananalo po ako ah. Ang uh, hindi pa po ako ko GC pero ito napakadali lang po nito ha. Unahan na po. Ito po. Who is the mother of Jesus? A. Mary, B. Elizabeth, C. Hannah, D. Virgin Mary. <laughs> ha? Ulit, ulit. ulit daw. Naguguluhan po hindi ho alam nung SGB representative natin kung sino po yung nauna. Sa so, ulit daw po. Titingnan niya mabuti. Who is the mother of Jesus? A. Mary B. Elizabeth C. Hannah D. Virgin Mary Ayan Okay Excuse me Ayan Sige po Ayan What's your name? And say your name um, Jennifer po Jennifer D. Good afternoon, Virgin Jennifer Virgin Mary uh, Ano po? Ano, ano? D. po, Virgin Mary Are you sure with your answer? Ha? Huh? With conviction. And the answer is, Jennifer, you are correct. Mary or Virgin Mary? Uh, Jennifer, uh, we, will have, we, we will have the prayer and fasting this January. And nandiyan dyan na po yung prayer and fasting booklet namin. Ibibigay po namin itong advance sa inyo. So para makapag-fast na po kayo ng December. <laughs> And then, come here. Okay, claim your prize. Jennifer, may I... Ito po ay isa'y para sa'yo ito. And this is your prize. Ano pa gusto mo? Army, Navy, or Starbucks? Mas na ano? Okay. Army, Army, Navy. Okay? Jennifer, congratulations, Jennifer. And please accept this prize, no? Pwede, niyong is, pwede mong isama ang buong pamilya at maghati-hati kayo sa French fries. <laughs> Sige po. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right. Freedom fries. <laughs> okay. Now, this afternoon, we will focus on one of the most important biblical characters before the birth of Jesus, who is Mary. And uh, the title of our message today is, Merry Christmas, Receive Jesus, God Sure Hope. And ano, ano po yung mapupulot natin sa buhay ni Mary? Gusto ko maintindihan nyo ang tatlong lessons that we can learn from the life of Mary. Ang una, nung nalaman niyang siya ang bearer or siya ang magiging nanay ng ating Panginoong Jesus, ang sagot po niya is, I don't deserve this. And this is all about grace. And, and this is how we respond when we understand that we are helpless before a holy God. What happened? Sa, sinasabi po natin, Lord, I don't deserve your grace. And this, but this grace is all available sa ating lahat. Okay? Once na, na, na nalama, no, na, na, na narinig niya at si, na sinabi nung anghel sa kanya na siya ang recipient of God's grace, ang naging resulta sa kanya is, I must tell someone. And immediately, she went to her cousin si Elizabeth and 
nandoon po sinabi po niya na she, she will now be the, the, the mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And this reminds us about the gospel. The gospel. And because this is the greatest gift that you can give to a person. And of course, after that, pakikita po natin sa verses na arali natin that Mary, nag, ano po siya, as a result of this, she glorified God through a songs of worship. And since dito po sinasabi, I will praise God always, and this is about God's glory. Okay? And this is, should be our life. Every day sa buhay po natin, it should be a daily worship to our God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, let's go to the first point, point number one. Okay? Now, I will focus on Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 56. So, in verse 1, ang sabi dito, Now in the sixth month of the angel, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth. Now, ano po ba itong six months na ito? Ang ibig sabihin ng six months, six months, no, no, yung anim na, buong, anim na buwan na hong pregnant si Elizabeth. If you would recall in the Bible, mas nauna hong nagbuntis si yung pinsa niyang si Elizabeth. So it's already the six month of Elizabeth pregnancy. Now, what happened? The angel Gabriel was sent from God. In the Bible, there are four specific angels, names of angel mentioned. The first angel is Lucifer. Si Lucifer. He was a fallen angel. The second is Apollyon. Apollyon, lalabas pa po siya pagdating yan sa Revelation, the end times. Siya po ang maglilid ng demonic legion realm during these times. And the third is Michael. Michael is known as the super angel. No? Siya po yung it connotes power, it connotes strength. So pag sa, na, binabasa niyo po yung, yung Bible, yung nakikipagbigmahan sa mga demonyo, si Michael yan. And the fourth angel is Gabriel. And Gabriel is a messenger from God. And every time angel Gabriel appeared in the Bible, there is an important message na ibinibigay po sa atin ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. He appeared in Daniel chapter 8, verse 15 to 16, where he interpreted yung, yung, yung vision ho ni Daniel about the end times. He appeared, no? The third, the second is appeared to Zachariah. Yung sinabi niya ho na uh, magkakaroon ng anak, ang, yung asawa na baog na yung po si John the Baptist. And the third instances that he appeared is in this verse. He appeared to Mary. So, the angels are real. Okay? Now, sabi ko dito, uh, and sabi niya dito, Gabriel was sent from God, it's a divine intercession, to a city in Galilee called Nazareth. Nazareth is where Mary lives. So, sabi ko sa verse uh, 27, to a virgin betrothed, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David and the virgin's name was Mary. You will note here, virgin, meaning she has no sexual relationship. No? And you will note the word betrothed. No? In, in a simple translation, it's engaged. Now, uh, the engagement at that time was different from our engagement today. My daughter uh, engaged po siya, ikakasal siya by next year, so she was already engaged. But engagement at time is different. Why? Because you will note here, betrothed or engaged, the ceremony where binding promises were made, considered to be husband and wife, but they did not live together or have marital relationships. So during the time when you are engaged, no, you are already Kayo na, no? At hindi po kayo magikita for one year so that the girl can prove her faithfulness, her purity doon po sa husband yan. And yung husband yan, habang hindi pa po sila nagkikita, during that one, month, one year period, nagtatayo na po siya ng pirahan. No? So that was basically the engagement. And in Jewish practice, the minimum age para huma engage ang isang babae, she's between uh, 
12 to 17. Pagdating naman po sa lalaki, mas mas matanda, nasa 15 siya to more or less 20. But in ad, but ang point po dito is si Mary and Joseph was really young couples. Totoy or nene pa ito. Okay? Kung sa bagay sa sa, sa, sa atin po, naglalaro pa ho ito ng PlayStation. Okay? <laughs> now. Now, ang um, As you will see here, after one year, what will what will happen? Magkakaroon na po ng kasal. Marriage. Approximately one year later, when the bridegroom prepared his home, a formal wedding for his bride. And this is how it was. Bukdun sa engagement nila. Let's continue. Sabi ho dito, the, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. Who, sino po si Joseph based on the passage of the descendants of David? Now, you will note that this is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 to 6. This is an exact fulfillment, meaning yung pung binabasa natin, yung pung basihan ng ating pananampalataya, it's 100% true, it's 100% accurate that whatever God said in this word, in this book, it will happen. Okay? Now, now, you will note in this passage how Mary was explained. This is the first time in the book of, in the Bible that the Mary was mentioned. Paano po ito, paano po siya minention? Sabi ko lang sa Bible, the virgin's name was Mary. Period. She was a virgin. The Bible, hindi ko sinabi sa Bible that Mary was a righteous, love God. She served God wholeheartedly with all her might, soul, and emotions. Wala pong sinasabi doon. Compared po, pag tinignan niyo yung case sa Karaya and Elizabeth in Luke chapter one verse six, dung pinili sila ng Panginoon. This is what the Bible said. Sa Karaya and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes. Careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. So Mary did not get any commendations from the Bible. Ano po ibig sabi ni to? Meaning Mary was just an ordinary person like you and me, na nagkakasalarin po sa panginoon. Okay? And you will note, no? And this is the principle na no matter how ordinary we are or weak we are, God can choose you. To do His will for His glory. So, sabi po dito, God chooses ordinary person to fulfill His will so that He receives the glory. And this gives us so much comfort that no matter how ordinary you are, no plain housewife ka lang, naglalaba ka, nagluluto ka, you can never underestimate the will of God. God can choose you. Okay, let's proceed. Sabi po dito. And in verse 28, And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Verse 29, But she was per- very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. Verse 30, The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now you will note the word favored, Inulit po siya ng dalawang beses. Now, the word favor or favored, ang sabi ko, comes from the Greek word charis, meaning much grace, full of grace, kindness, or in other words, grace given. Ang ganda po sinabi ni Hampton Kethley dito, sabi yung hindi niya dito, the Greek word for grace is charis. Its basic idea is simply unearned favor, an unearned gift, a favor of or blessings bestowed as a gift Freely and never as merit for work performed, grace is that which God does for mankind through His Son, which mankind cannot earn, does not deserve, and will never merit. So ano po siya sabi dito? Grace is an earned favor, an earned gift. Hindi hu natin deserving ito. Nagkasala na tayo, bibigyan pa tayo ng regalo. Ang perfect example ko po nito ay yung police, di ba? Oh, nung Friday, umuwi po ako ng umuwi po ako, medyo nahuli po ako. 
nahuli ako ng pulis dyan sa kanto. At sabi niyo sa akin ng pulis, eh, kasi naman ho, hindi ho kayo sumusunod eh. Sabi ko, Pangin, sabi ko, Sir, maawa na ho kayo. Kasama ko yung wife ko. Patawarin niyo na ho ako. Bigyan mo ako lisensya. Akin yung lisensya mo. Sinisigawan pa po ako doon. So ako naman, oh, ito na po yung lisensya ko. And tawag dito, I was really praying. Binigay ko po yung lisensya. Tapos, nung binigay ko po yung lisensya, hindi ko po alam, baka ho may nakitang nagliwanag yung mukha ko nung binigay ko yung lisensya. Ang sabi niya ho sa akin, ayan na yung lisensya mo. Pinatatawad na kita. Ha? Tawag dito. Ha, ta- 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 anong tawag niyo doon? Diba? Pag pinatawad ka ng pulis, that's mer. That is, pag, in, pagka p- kinuha ko yung lisensya ko at tinikita na ko, anong tawag nyo doon? Just. Tama? Tama lang, naparusahan ako. Nagkasala ako eh. Pero nung binalik po sa akin yung lisensya ko, anong tawag doon? That's mercy. Diba? Dahil dito, pinatawad ako. Pero kung yung pulis na yon, no? No? Uh, may mga pulis na nag- nagkasala ka na, nag-violate ka ng traffic rules, binigyan ka pa ng isang libo, oh, bigay mo yan sa, sa pamilya mo, pang kumain kayo sa restaurant. Hindi mo deserving yung 1,000 kasi nagkasala ka na nga eh. But that is grace. It is an uh, unearned favor or unearned gift. Now, Mary recognized that she was a recipient of God's grace. Alam niya na hindi ako deserving because pag tinignan niyo ho yung Bible, she personally admitted that in Luke chapter 1, verse 47, ang sabi ho dito, And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary recognized that she needed a Savior like you and me. Okay, now, let's proceed. Sabi ho dito, in Luke Chapter 1, verse 29. But she was perplexed at this statement and, and kept pondering on what kind of salut- salutation this was. So she was confused. She was troubled. Ano ba ito? Anong klaseng sinasabi nito ng itong angel Gabriel na to? And in verse 30, sabi dito, the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. The angel reassured her that you are favored by God. You will receive much grace, grace coming from God. Let's proceed now. And this is uh, the principle that grace transforms ordinary lives for extraordinary purpose. And that is grace given to us. Let's proceed now. In verse 31, sabi ho dito, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Now, this is a monumental truth in the Bible because the last book of Old Testament, Malachi, to the first book of New Testament, Matthew, Luke, John, and Mark, silent po ang Panginoon for 400 years. Wala ho tayong maririnig sa kanya, hindi ho siya nag, nagpadala ng propeta, hindi ho siya nagmilagro, hindi ho siya nag, 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 nagpadala ng anghel, whatever. But after 400 years, boom, pumasok na po itong verse 31. And sabi ho dito, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear son, and you shall name him Jesus. And this verse, no, itong verse na ito, was an exact fulfillment of yung prophecy po ni Isaiah chap- sa Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 ang sabi ho dito Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign behold a virgin will be with child and bear a son and she will call his name Emmanuel This was a full this was a fulfillment 700 years before Christ was born on the book given by the prophet Isaiah Okay. Now, pag tinignan nyo po, may sinabi po ditong Emmanuel. Ano po itong Emmanuel? Emmanuel means God with us. Was not intended to be a proper name that people would call him. As you read the Bible, you find that Jesus is identified as Emmanuel. Meaning, uh, si Jesus Christ po, siya po yung Emmanuel na sinasabi sa New Testament. And you will note here that the name Jesus is Yeshua. A combination of Yah, an abbreviation of Yahweh, for Yahweh, and the name of Israel's God, and the verb Yasha, meaning rescue, deliverer, or saved. So meaning, bakit kailangan ba natin ng rescuer? 
Bakit kailangan natin ng deliverer and bakit na kailangan natin ng Savior? We need Jesus. Because you will note, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God by, by eating the forbidden fruit, what happened? Pumasok po ang Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. Sabi ho dito, So the Lord God said to the serpent, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his feet. Sina, sino po ito sinasabi dito? This was the first time in the Bible that the gospel was already proclaimed. Because God knew that because of one sin, we will now destined to go to hell. And God already provided a solution as early as Genesis chapter 3. Ano po yung solution na yon? Sino po yung he? Yan po si Jesus Christ. Sabi niya po dito, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Ano po it dito? Si Satan will temporarily win during this. And this happened during the crucifixion. But after three days, he rose again. And if you will note here, the word her seed. Nakita niyo po yun? Her seed. Now, hindi, this is the first time in the history of the, in, in this world na nagkaroon po yung seed, yung, yung babae. Because ang similia or sperm, kanino galing? Sa man. Right? Hindi po pwede magkaroon ng similia or sperm ang babae. Nagka, meron lang po siyang egg to fertilize the sperm. So what happened? This is where the Holy Spirit divinely intervened that uh, through the power of God given to the Holy by the Holy Spirit, ang ginawa po nagkaroon po ng, ng male chromosomes. At ito po male chromosome na ito ay without sin. At that male chromosome was implanted to the womb of Mary and Mary now fertilized that uh, seed. And yung po Jesus Christ. Now, bakit hindi ho pwedeng yung seed galing kay, kay Joseph? Because Joseph is from the descendants of Adam and Eve. May bahid po yun ng kasalanan eh. So, pag, yung po ang seed na, nang, na, 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 na ginamit po, well, hindi ho pwede. Magkakaroon ngayon ng problema because may issue ngayon na hay may magkakaroon ng kasalanan so kaya po sa bible ang sinasabi sa bible ng, ng about Jesus Christ referring to Christ he committed no sin nor was any deceit found in his mouth he is the perfect sacrifice at kaya po siya kaya po siya ang perfect sacrifice for us i cannot i cannot die for my wife kasi pag ako maski ako mamatay May kasalanan pa rin ako eh. I cannot save her. But there is only one person that can save us. And sino po yun? Jesus Christ. And that is very clear. Pag tinignan mo in John chapter 46, kaya po ang sabi niya, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. He is the perfect sacrifice because He committed no sin. Kaya ho, pag, gat, gat, ganito lang po siya eh. Ito tayo, right? When we recognize our helplessness, when we recognize, Lord, I need you. I recognize na isa lang pong kasalanan ay sapat na na mapunta po ako sa impair. No, what happened? You now have this need. You now open your heart to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And what happened? When you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, this is now Jesus. You are now being covered by the blood of Jesus. So ang nakikita po ng Panginoon ay hindi na po tayo. Ang nakikita po ay ang Panginoong Jesus because He is the perfect sacrifice. He is the only way, the truth and the life. He is the best, the only way that will reconcile us to God. Okay? Let's proceed. Now, sabi ho dito, paano po inexplain si Jesus based on this verse? He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. He will be great. Pag tinignan niyo po dito, Jesus Christ is a great because his sacrifice has provided a way for the sins of mankind to be forgiven. His teachings bring faith, hope, peace, love, and transformation to broken lives. 
He gives comfort, protection, provision to those who are committed to Him. So what happened? Great. The sun, meaning, ang, sa Hebrew word po, ang sun is have same qualities with the Father. Most high refers to God. And sabi ho dito, He will reign over the house of Jacob. He will reign over Israel and His kingdom will know no end. Okay. And in verse 34, because of this, ang sabi ho, Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? Si Mary ho hindi ho siya nag-doubt. She was just wondering, paano mangyayari ito? Remember, after one year ko pa makikita ang mapapangasawa ko si Joseph, you mean to say, paano ito mangyayari? And the angel replied in verse 35, the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Ito po yung sinasabi ko kanina when I explain the message, the verse about her sin. Okay, now, in verse 36, And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she was, and she was called barren, is now in her sixth month. Ibig sabihin, sabi ko nang, uh, yung, yung pinsan mo nga eh, baog eh, matanda na, hindi na pwede magkaroon ng anak, pero magkakaroon ng anak. She, he, the angels now giving confirmation that this is now a divine uh, appointment given to Mary. And sabi niya dito, bakit? In verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. Wala hong imposible sa Panginoon. And in verse 38, and Mary said, behold the bond slaves of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. You know the word bond slave? Ang word po niyan sa Greek is dulos, no? A dulos, ang dulos po, it's a, comes from a, the prefix deo, meaning Mary is now binded with the will of God, regardless of the consequences. Now, ang ganda po nung sinabi ho dito ni Ralph Earl, ang sabi niya dito, Dulos signifies that Mary placed herself completely at God's disposal even though she knew the outcome would bring shame and disgrace on her in the eyes of her family and neighbors. And you will need to understand that when Mary said, no, knew the consequences of her decision on this. Now, in that particular time, pag ang isa pong babae ay na-prove, no? nasa engagement period na po kayo, at na na hindi ka berhen, that is now tantamount to adultery. And that is punishable in their law. Based in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 20, it says, They shall bring the girl to the entrance of her father's house, and there her townsmen shall stone her to death. Mary knew that this will cost her life. Mamamatay siya because of this situation. But what happened? She trusted and obeyed God. You know, uh, Thelma and I, my wife, were engaged for eight years. And uh, she was a product of a broken family. And she was petitioned by her father na pumunta po sa state. So, bago po siya umalis, <laughs> nagbigay po kami ng pangako sa isa't isa na ikakasal kami. Now, kaya lang, iba yung situation namin. No? Kasi, yung mami niya at saka yung dalawa niyang kapatid, iniwan po sa akin. So, just imagine po, no, boyfriend pa lang ito, ako na po yung nag-aalaga doon sa nanay at dalawa niyang kapatid. Okay? And when she went to the sa, sa US, ang nangyari po is sinerang siya ng gospel nung kapatid niya. And in-invite siya sa isang Christian church and doon po niya nakilala ang Panginoong Jesus. So during that time, she wrote me several letters about Jesus and I was really enjoying oh Jesus, the verse, nakakatalagang buti naman, tag dito, you're so blessed there. But there was a, there's, there was point in time na nakareceive po ako ng letter sa kanya, ang sabi niya sa akin, because I want to follow God, 
hindi tayo pwedeng ikasal. And sabi niya sa, kasi hindi tayo, we are unequally yoked. Hindi pwede, John eh. And when I read that, I was really f- felt betrayed. Nasaktan ho ako eh. Because sa dami ho, sa kabila ng ginawa ko sa iyo, tawag dito, ganito pa gagawin mo sa akin? Ano ba yung basihan ng pananampalataya mo? And galit na galit po ako. Ang sabi ko po sa kanya, simple lang, ipoprove kung mali ka. Okay. Ipoprove ko. So, during that time, naghanap po ako. I really research. I really search. Ano po ba talaga yung faith na in-embrace ko? And I attended several churches. No? And minsan po, pag uh, yung pastor po nagsasalita at bababa na yan, natatakot na pong bumaba. Kasi pag, pag pababa na siya, nandyan na ako. Susunod na ako. Mag-usap tayo. Mag-usap tayo sa sinasabi mo. But, you know, the Lord used that as an avenue for me to know the truth. And after so many years, no, we waited, but God was already moving sa, sa puso ko. And right now, our family, si Thelma, myself, and Trisha, are product of God's grace. And that is the grace available for all of you. Praise God. Now, so, sabi ho dito, once you understand this, ano po yung reaction natin? What is our response? I don't deserve this grace. Okay, sabihin mo niyo sa katabi niyo, I don't deserve this grace. Ayan. Okay. okay, now, how is this become relevant to you and me? Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, ang sabi ho dito, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. No? Many of us, hindi ho naiintindihan yung lalim ng biyaya o grasya ng Panginoon na ibinigay sa atin. Now, uh, ano po ba ito? No? Grace is God's righteousness, presence and power given to us through Jesus Christ. It does not stop when you are being saved. Because the moment you are being saved, the Holy Spirit now fills your life, fills you, and the power, the presence and power of God is now being with you. And this is now my question to you. My question is, do you have God's grace? Do you have God's grace? Or kung meron po kayo biyaya o grasya ng Panginoon, are you fully surrendered to God's grace? Can you honestly say to me right now, na katulad ni Mary, kaya niyong sabihin, let it be done according to your word. Kaya niyo hubang sabihin that that will cost your life na mas ginaano mangyari, ipaglalaban at ipaglalaban ko ang Panginoon. Kasi siya yung nagligtas at mahal na mahal ko siya. Now, let me now, I want you to understand the impact of that grace. Mary was chosen. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, we are chosen. The word chosen in that particular verse is eklektos. Eklektos means you were chosen before the creation of the universe. Even before light, sun, you were already in God's mind that you were chosen because of Jesus Christ. And that, and that choice, it cannot be altered or it cannot be changed. It was a deliberate choice made by God that I want this person. Gusto ko ito si Rico, gusto ko ito si Ella, because they are, I want them. At wala po tayong ipagmamalaki because it is not you who choose God, it is God ang pumili po sa atin. Mary was favored. We are favored based on John chapter 14, verse 16. We are no longer God's enemy. Yes, we have problems or trials in life, but that problems or trials in life are tools used by God so that we will be more like Jesus. 
And the more that we, more, we become more like Jesus, what happened? When you have problems or trials, you now become dependent and you trust God in a manner that you have done, never done before. So, dandahan, nagigi kanyang kawangis. And Mary was not afraid. We do not fear. In John chapter 14, verse 27. Now, bakit hindi po tayo natatakot? You ha- you look- now, the Holy Spirit, no? who parted the Red Sea, the Holy Spirit who gave Samson the extraordinary strength, the Holy Spirit who multiplied the fish and the loaves, the Holy Spirit who raised Lazarus from the dead are basically the same Holy Spirit, yung po yung banal na espiritu na nasa atin ngayon. So, whenever we face setbacks, whenever we face challenges in our lives, God has already won the victory. If you are living in the presence of God, if you are filled by the Holy Spirit moment by moment, and if you go through that design that God has given you, wala pong talo. Yes, magkakaroon, madada pa po tayo from time on, but at the end of the tunnel, the victory has been won. And this is the assurance that, ano po ang worst na pwede pong mangyari sa atin? Mamatay tayo, right? But when we have Jesus Christ, we do not fear death. Why? Because our real home is not really here. Our real home is in heaven where we will have eternity and happiness, joy with God. Now, this is the impact of the grace. Now, and we, as a result, yung biyaya ng Panginoon, what will happen? Ang resulta po sa atin is, I, my, I must tell someone. Okay, I must. Ito po yung nangyari kay Mary. Nung nalaman niya na siya po ang magiging nanay ni Jesus Cristo, what happened? Our Lord and Savior, pumunta po siya kay Elizabeth para sabihin ito. And this reminds us that whenever we receive that grace, our first reaction no, is we must tell or we must share the gospel. Sabihin niyo po sa katabi niyo, we, I, you must share the gospel. Okay. Now, ano po yung nangyari? In Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 40, ang sabi dito, Now at this time, Mary arose and went in hurry to the hill country to a, a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Now, Malayo po yung pinanggalingan ni Mary sa bahay po ni Elizabeth. This is about 130 kilometers. So, sinasabi nga po, from Alabang, pupunta ka po ko doon sa Pampanga. No? Doon sa San Fernando, Pampanga. So, yan po yung layo. No? And then, what happened is, when Mary saw Elizabeth, no? nakita niya, she was really full of joy and giving the confirmations of what the angel has given her. So ito po. And the principle is so simple. Sinapa, God often provides confirmations and companionship in our journeys of faith. Minsan may mangyayari po na gumagamit at gagamit ang Panginoon ng mga katuwang natin sa buhay to confirm that that is your calling, that is what I am, I want you to do in your life. So what happened? So this, sabi ho in verse 41, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you will note here na hindi ho ito basta-basta bisa, buntis po tayo, di ba tayo buntis kayo, ay, gumagalaw yung bata. You will note the perfect timing on this, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting. Meaning, doon pa lang po sa sinapupunan ni Mary, John the Baptist was already filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened? And Elizabeth also, yung mami niya, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. You will note here the word among. Hindi po sinabi over or over and above women, but among, meaning equal. No? Parehas lang po tayo with Mary. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. In verse 43, And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? You will see here the humility of Elizabeth. 
Pakita mo. And, di ba, sinabihan na siya eh, that you, your son also will be great because he will be the forerunner of, of the Messiah. But in this particular verse, she recognized that kung yung dinadala po ni Mary is more, much greater than any person in this world. Okay? Now, pagdating po sa verse 44, For behold, when the sound... When the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby lit in my womb for joy. Verse 45, And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. Mary was blessed, Mary was blessed because she believed. And all of us here are called not just a hearers. No? Hindi, po, hindi po nagtatapos yung buhay natin when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You were saved because God wants you to do something for Him. And you are the doers of His Word, not just the hearers of His Word. And we are called to share what? Yung biyaya ng Panginoon so that to give hope doon po sa mga taong nangangailangan kay Heso Kristo. And, and this is no, and the, the best application for this is, are we excited to share with others that Jesus is on our lives? You know, the best gift that you can give to a person is the gospel. If you are thinking of any Christmas gift, the best gift is the gospel. Why? Because the gospel will change that person's life. It will change not only his life, it will change his family, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. His life will change from discontent to contentment, from fear. He will no longer be afraid of death, from eternal condemnation to eternal happiness and joy in heaven and that is what you are having right now and that is the gospel and i pray that you will have this desire you will need to ignite your heart as we continue you reaching out to other people and this is our uh, i am ako po yung in charge to prepare the plans of metro south six churches, and what is our battle cry next year? Our battle cry is so simple. Each one, bring one to Christ. And our prayer is all of you, every one of you will be very intentional of bringing people one step closer to Christ. Bakit po ito po ang battle cry natin? The Bible is very clear. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And this is my prayer. What, how you will, paano nyo po ito gagawin? Simply lang po. We use this, this one, no? The best decision. The best decision, we will make this available outside the worship venue. Ang simple lang po ang gagawin nyo dito. Now, whenever you have gatherings, a, a family gatherings, do not assume that they are already saved. So, ang gawin nyo lang is share this booklet to them. And ang gagawin nyo lang, read the first page. We made Different kinds, we make different kinds of decision. Sasabihin niyo lang po ito, simple or trivial, where to eat, what to wear. Significant, what career should I pursue? And life-changing, who do I marry? And today, you are about to make a decision that will impact you for eternity. So yun lang po, and let them read truth number one, truth number two, truth number three, and truth number four. And after that, you close that in prayer. And I pray that you will utilize these Christmas holidays to just share Jesus in your family. And I've done this, no? When we had uh, last November, my family from Bicol, uh, pumunta po, now bago po kami nag-start na kumain, uh, yan po yung ginawa, the best decision. And I was also invited, no? In, so, sa CCF Muntinlupa, uh, to do this kind of event, no? I just shared the best decision. What is our battle cry? Our battle cry next year is so simple. Each one bring one to Christ. Now, before we proceed with our third point, I would like now to call uh, one of our family friends, 
si Reggie Joseph to give her testimony about her life sharing Christ. Let's all welcome Reggie Joseph. Magandang hapon po. Nakilala ko ang Panginoong Jesus sa impluensya ng aking asawa na naging instrumento sa pamamagitan ng transformational power ng ating Diyos. Dahil sa karanasang ito, mas naging bukas ang ako sa pagsali sa pag-aaral ng Biblia at pagdalo sa simbahan na sa huli humantong sa aking pananampalataya kay Jesus nang maipamahagi ang Ebanghelyo. Sa kabila ng bagong pananampalataya, patuloy akong dumalo sa tradisyonal na simbahan kung saan ako ay pinalaki. Sa paniniwalang sapat ang aking mabubuting gawain at pagsunod sa mga relihiyosong obligasyon upang mapanatili ang kapatawaran at pabor ng Diyos. Ngunit, isang gabi, habang nakikinig ako sa aming pastor na ibinabahagi ang gospel sa isang kaibigan, biglang naramdaman ko ang pagnanais na aminin ang aking mga sariling kasalanan. Ang pag-unawa sa kabanalan ng Diyos at ang aking desperadong pangangailangan kay Jesus ay nananatatiling bumabalot sa aking isipan kahit matagal na kaming umalis. Naramdaman ko ang labis na pasasalamat para sa bagong pagtuklas na ito dahil ito ang nagpalaya sa akin mula sa pasanin ng sariling kakayahan at ritual. Ang patuloy na pagnanais kong makilala ang Diyos at ang kanyang salita ay humantong sa isang pagbabago sa aking kalooban sapagkat nagsimula akong talikuran ang aking pagtitiwala sa sariling pagsisikap at sa halip ay yakapin ang kalayaang natagpuan kay Jesus. Ang pagbabagong ito sa pananaw ay nagudyok din sa akin na talikuran ang mga kasalanan na ipinakita sa akin ng Diyos. Sa pagpursigi sa pagbabahagi ng Ebanghelyo, aktibong hinanap ko ang mga pagkakataon na maibahagi ang mensahe sa aking pamilya, mga kaibigan at sino mang iba pang dinala ng Diyos sa aking landas. Nakilahok din ako sa ESVEC, isang samahan na nakatutok sa pagbabahagi ng Ebanghelyo sa mga bata sa mga pampublikong paaralan na nagbigay sa akin ng kakayahan na komportable na iparating ang mensahe sa Tagalog kapag kinakailangan. Nagdadala ako ng mga gospel tracks, katulad ng Best Decision, sa aking bag upang ibigay ito sa mga taong aking nabahaginan ng salita ng Diyos. Nang i-launch ng CCF ang Pray Care Share, ako'y walang pag-aaptubiling sumali at nakasaksi ng maraming taong sumunod kay Kristo. Isang napaka-personal na karanasan ito dahil nakita ko ang aking mga kapatid, mga minamahal na kaibigan, at maging ilang empleyado na tumugon sa mensahe ng pag-asa kay Jesus. Sa panahon ng pandemya, na natiling matatag ako sa panalangin at nagiging intensyonal sa pagsisikap na ipamahagi ang Ebanghelyo. Ang mahirap na panahong ito ay nagbukas ng paraan para magkaroon ako ng Bible study kasama ang aking mga kaibigan noong high school tuwing Webes ng gabi. Ang isa sa kanila, naninirahan sa ibang bansa, ay dedicated na gumising ng maaga upang makasali sa amin. Isa sa mga nap pakalakas na patutuo ay ang aking kapatid na nakipaglaban sa pagiging adik sa droga ng 37 taon. Sa biyaya ng Diyos, aking nasaksihan ang kanyang pagtanggap kay Jesus at malaking pagbabago. At ako'y nagagalak na makita siyang naglilingkod sa ushering ministry dito sa CCF Alabang. Gayun paman, ang paglalakbay sa pagbabahagi ng Ebanghelyo ay hindi nagkulang ng mga hamon. Kasama ng kaligayahan sa pagmamasid ng pagbabago sa iba, patuloy akong hinubog ng Diyos. Kanyang inayos ang aking mga kakulangan at mga personal na balakid na maaaring hadlang sa mga taong aking ibinabagihanan ng Ebanghelyo. Dagdag pa, ang mga hamon ng buhay tulad ng pangamba sa kadlusugan, hindi pagkakaunawaan sa mga relasyon at persecution ay mga kasamang kaakibat sa paglalakbay na ito bilang isang mananampalataya. 
Sa aking pag-reflect kung paano ako iniligtas ni Jesus, kahit hindi ako karapat dapat, patuloy kong pinagtitiwalaan ang grasya ng Diyos. Ang pag-unawa na ito ay nagpapalakas muli sa aking pagnanais na lumago sa silita at nagpapaligaya sa akin habang namamangha ako sa kapangyarihan ng pag-ibig ng Diyos sa mga buhay ng mga nasa paligid ko. Lubos akong nagpapasalamat na pinagkalooban ako ng Diyos ng pagkakataon na maging katuwang niya sa pagbabahagi ng mabuting salita. Pinanghahawakan ko ng mahigpit ang mga itunuturo sa Galatians 6.9. Huwag tayong mawala ng pag-asa sa paggawa ng mabuti, sapagkat sa takdang panahon ay aani tayo kung hindi tayo susuko. Ako po ay si Reggie Joseph, pinagpala na maging lingkod ng ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas na Iso Kristo. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you so much. Were you blessed? Thank you. Uh, thank you for being an encouragement for that and that is my prayer for all of us that we will not grow weary and we continue sharing God's word now we now go to our third point when Mary no, learned grace, yung biyaya ng Panginoon ano pong ginawa niya binahagi niya ito sa kanyang pinsan na si Elizabeth and because of that, no, that will now result to, I will praise God always. Now, you will note here that after sharing to Elizabeth, ang, ang resulta po is giving God all the glory. In verses 46 to 56, this is about worship, Mary's worship song. And she was j just pouring out her heart na ang tawag po dito ay magnificat. Pag tinignan niyo po sa Bible, ang ibig sabihin po niyan is exalt. Now, she was just praising God uh, through her worship songs. And based on this, ano po ito? Sabi ko sa verse 46, sabi, And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord. No, Ibig sabihin, I exalt you, Lord. You must increase, I must decrease. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Now, the word rejoice here literally means, ang ibig sabihin to jump, meaning it is now a picture of a, a, a climber who has reached the peak of the mountain. No? And in verse 48, sabi dito, for he has had regard for the humble state of his bond slave, for behold, from this time on all generations will count me blessed. And you will note here how the humility of Mary went in terms of uh, praising Jesus, God. Now, in verse, sabi niya dito, Mary understood her need. Now, let's proceed. In verse 49, sabi dito, For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name, and His mercy is upon generation after generation to those who Fear him. And you will note here that Mary understood her God. In this particular passage, si Mary ngayon was now shifting from herself kung ano ho ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa ibang tao. For those who fear him, therefore God will have mercy on them. And she goes now into detail. Based on this, sabi yun dito, papano po inexplain sa dito ni Mary si Ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, He has done mighty deeds with His arm. He has scattered those who were proud in those in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humbled. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. You will note in this passage, yung pong past perfect tense. Ang ibig sabihin po niyan, it is a style in the Bible na sinasabi lang po doon is yung prophecy na sinasabi dito ay nangyayari na. Okay? So, it po po. And how is this being said? Ito po yung, this is how Mary magnified our God. And in verse 54, sabi niya dito, He has given help to Israel, His servant, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And in verse 
56, and Mary stayed with her about three months and then returned to her home. Now, Mary is a model believer. Why? Because she, she was blessed because she believed. And she was a recipient of God's grace from God. And this is how we have to respond. That whenever we, we receive God's grace, we have to to believe and do what God has commanded us to do. And if you will note in this passage, every word points to God. Pag tinignan niyo po yan, God is, in verse 46, God is Lord, God is Savior, God is caring, God is blesser, God is personal, God is holy, God is merciful, God is worthy, God is mighty, God is sovereign, God is gracious, God is our provider, God is helper, and God is faithful. And this is the hope of we have for this Christmas. We looked on Jesus being our hope, our Savior in our life. And as we end this, how can you glorify God in your situation today? How? What's the application? Ang application po, before you leave this Worship venue, simply lang po. We must receive God's grace, we must share the gospel, and we must always give God the glory. As we end this message, let me focus first on the first one. For those of you who have not yet received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, for those of you who are not yet sure that you have the grace of God, Maybe some of us here are going through difficulties and pain. Some of us here are in financial need. Hindi po tayo makabayad ng utang. Some of us here maybe are asking, ano po yung purpose ng buhay ko? Trabaho ng trabaho, Lord, pagod na po ako. And some of us here maybe are, have issues in relationship. You are hurting. God intentionally has given this to you so that this will be an avenue for you to really embrace the grace that God is offering you. I do not know your heart right now. And this is the message that I really want you to, to understand. That Jesus did not came. Hindi po siya ipinanganak doon po sabsabsaban for those who celebrate Christmas. But He was there for those who are seeking, for those who need help, for those who are helpless. Nangangailangan po sila ng Panginoon. And I pray that as you get out of this worship venue, you will be very sure on your salvation that Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the only hope. He is the only way for us to be united with God. And for those of you who have not yet, uh, who already have the grace of God, my question to you this afternoon is, are you totally surrendered to God's grace? Have you let go that any sins in your life that will have, that is not really glorifying to God? And I pray that you, the same Mary, you will say, God, in front of God, let it be done according to your will. And my prayer that you will use every moment or every opportunities in your life to share Jesus Christ with you. And my question to all of us before we leave this worship venue, how about us? Do we dare to turn away and be indifferent to the needs of others? Or do you want to live a life of significance where you will share our hope through Jesus Christ? It's your, it's your choice. And I pray that every moment of your life will count because that is what we are being called for, to share Jesus, our hope, in our life. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. 
Lord, salamat po Panginoon sa grasyang ipinagkaloob niyo po sa amin. We are undeserving, Lord, right now because of that grace and you have gifted us with so, so many more in our life. Lord, I pray that you will give us your lens, your perspective on how we see people. They need you. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us this passion, that our hearts will again be ignited to reach out for our loved ones, especially this Christmas, because that is your purpose, why you came here on earth. And I pray that you will give us your presence, your power, and we will not grow weary. We love you. We praise you. Bless every one of us attending this worship venue. And we look forward again hearing from you next Sunday. This we pray in Jesus' name.